House of Representatives. He is the first Republican to hold this Senate seat in his lifetime. He serves on the Armed, for armed Services, Environment and Public Works, Veteran Affairs, Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs, and Budget Committees. Senator Kramer has a distinguished career in public service. In 2003, then Governor John Hoven appointed Kramer to the Public Service Commission. And in 2004, he was elected to that position. As a North Dakota Public Service Commissioner, he ensured North Dakotans enjoy some of the lowest utility rates in the United States, enhancing their competitive position in the global marketplace. Kevin is a native of Kindred, North Dakota, and he and his wife, Chris, have five children and five grandchildren. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks, Dennis. That was, that was uh, generous. I have to say, I feel a little bit badly about cutting off a lawyer so you can hear from a senator because brevity is not <laughs> known for either. We're not, neither one of us are known for brevity as far as professions. Um, but uh, I am in the middle of votes, as you maybe know. We, I just voted and we have two more votes coming up on um, uh, confirmations for judges. Weird as it might seem this late in the game, but we're trying to get as many of those done as we can. There's a lot of other political stuff swirling around. I'm happy to address it if anybody wants to but first of all i wanted to you know may, obviously make some comments relevant to to this particular meeting and uh, and congratulate you on doing it the way you're doing it i think this is is marvelous it's a great way to communicate especially the 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 um, multitude of issues and, and the variety of issues that a joint group like yours uh, has to address um I will say it's interesting too in terms of timing because some of the things that are going on, including uh, just last week, a, a, a rescinding of the uh, Missouri River water rule that we worked so hard on. I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. Um, just this week, uh, or maybe I guess it was last week when uh, uh, the House passed our word of bill, or maybe it was just a couple of days ago. I can't keep track. They're all one giant day to me lately. Um, so we you know, want to be able to visit about that a little bit. And then the fact that just last night I was <laughs> over at the Department of the Interior um, speaking at um, the unveiling of Ryan Zinke's uh, portrait, uh, Secretary Zinke, and it was there with a lot of the people we work with every day, a lot of those undersecretaries that I sort of helped along uh, into their positions. And um, of course, Secretary Bernhard was there. And so I had a number of conversations about water issues and some of the progress that's been made and much of the progress yet to be made on the federal side of things. Um, but uh, maybe we can address a few of those as we go here. I also think it's just really important right up front to um, recognize at a time like this, uh, the, the uh, passing of Senator Mark Andrews. I can tell you that as, uh, you know, right fresh out of college, pretty much, I went to work for Mark Andrews, and then uh, for the North Dakota Republican Party as a young political with full of idealism. And, and the, the, of course, the biggest issues we dealt with then and the last issue that I talked with Mark about um, early this year was uh, were water issues. And uh, he and I were kindred spirits in, in that sense. And uh, he, I think he enjoyed as, as much as I enjoyed uh, talking about the history of water issues in North Dakota and uh, land use and uh, individual rights, landowner rights, township, county, <laughs> state rights, and um, and it was great. So it's just it's hard to imagine that he's gone, but uh, he's left quite a legacy that we continue to work on. Um, with relation to that that whole issue, uh, generally, and water issues generally, and the issue of of states' rights and local landowners' rights and everybody in between. Uh, you know, my number one issue every single day in this place, the thing I wake up thinking about on a broad scale, of course, is uh, the role of federalism and, the, and the, the decline of cooperative federalism in our, in our federal system. It's why I've held up uh, many Corps of Engineers uh, nominations and stars on generals' shoulders and whatnot until I got a, a clearer answers uh, as it relates to what they're going to do about restoring cooperative federalism in, as our founders intended it. And a lot of it centers around water issues. It, it, and, and a lot of it, it doesn't, um, although a lot of it centers around land issues and, and water issues, but a lot of other things as well. But I think that land and water issues are the area where um, I've honed in, obviously, as, as chairman of the subcommittee on um, water, fisheries, and, and wi wildlife, water, and fisheries, I have uh, direct jurisdiction over the Corps of Engineers and Clean Water Act and, uh, and, and, and Clean Drinking Water Act and things like that. So it, we deal with it a lot. But it's the one topic that I raised and drilled down on with uh, Amy Coney Barrett. She was the first and so far only um, Supreme Court Justice I've had the opportunity to um, confirm or vote on. And uh, we had a robust discussion about the role of 
uh, states and the role of the courts in protecting federalism. Because as I said to her, lazy legislating in the Congress has led to a bureaucracy that feels like they can tell people in North Dakota what's best for them and often do. In fact, all too often do. And um, she, of course, first of all, said, I would never accuse you of being lazy, but um, she's a strong proponent of federalism. So I, I just thank you for this relationship. And this is what allows me to, to address these issues every single day with some, some um, confidence that, uh, that we're going the right direction. I, I, I'm going to talk when it, just with regard to some of the issues. And I don't know that we'll get to all of them again, depending on when the next board is called. I'll be looking over this way from time to time at my TV here. Um, but I want to talk about that Missouri River water supply rule that uh, where, where we've just made some tremendous progress. And I first of all I want to thank General Spellman, uh, you know, the new director, as you know, replaced General Seminite at the Corps of Engineers. He and I have had many, many <laughs> robust discussions about that rule. And uh, just to give you a little background on it, you, you might recall that um, uh, President Trump, after I uh, in, after I contacted him and said we need to we need to withdraw this 2008 rule, um, he did in fact um, withdrew the water supply rule, and that would have cemented the Corps policy that would have infringed on the the right of states and and uh, tribal water authorities, and so after he did that, I worked closely with General Spellman to get appropriate guidance language. It was clumsy. I don't mind telling you every time the discussion left him and me and went to somebody below him, uh, we had to rein it back in and, and, and bring it back up and um, get it back on track. And I have to applaud uh, Wayne Stengem and really all of the Western, uh, Western attorneys general. Uh, they unanimously supported the language that I was working on and, and the rescinding uh, that I worked on, as did every Western governor. And that means every Republican and every Democrat. And it was great to have that kind of a bipartisan, large coalition of leaders working with me and, and having my back as, as I, I pushed this in with, um, with the Corps of Engineers. And again, kudos to, to General Spellman who hung in there and, and quite honestly admitted to me um, that as he looked at the history of that rule, Many of the things that I was claiming that he thought were f too far-fetched to be true, he found out that not only were they true, but several of the bureaucrats uh, that were part of that were rather proud of it. And uh, so hopefully we made a breakthrough there, and I think we have. Another area that I've worked very hard on, as you all know, um, is with regard to water uh, waterfall production areas, the WPAs and the administrative appeal process. I, I just last night when I was over at the Department of Interior, talked to all of the lawyers that worked on it, including Aurelia Skip with the director who came out to North Dakota, Dan, uh, Secretary Bernhardt who came out to North Dakota to meet with landowners um, to talk about what I believe is just a, a taking of, uh, of uh, land and, and uh, using these WPAs and the easements that fathers and grandfathers and great grandparents previously had signed Senator you're muted. Yeah. Okay, I see that. Did was that from the very beginning? <laughs> no, you just the last few seconds. You're okay, okay. now. Something happened. Yeah. Okay, good. Few. Um and then, uh, so, so with regard to the WPAs, uh, we had a discussion with all the lawyers last night that they've been working on, including Kate McGregor, of course, uh, the director, administrator, um, skip with, uh, really a skip with. They've been working on the appeals process and they, they, you know, they were rather proud of themselves. And I have to admit to you guys, I told them, look, you've done some things good for us. The new maps are great. You know, having the digitized maps are great. The problem is that you, you uh, did the old switch and bait trick where um, whoever's creating the maps based on aerial images and, and history and whatnot chose to just leave out all of the lakes and the big wetlands that were obviously part of the original easement so that they could add that acreage to the, you know, to the uh, hilltops and the, and the rock rock piles. So I said, you know, better maps, okay, but you know, bad in, in, in their outcome and still no appeal that's been successful. Um, all that said, what they did do is I think they're helping us build a much better record for whether it's an individual or regional or even uh, some sort of a class action. And when I told them that, they were kind of puzzled um, and I think even a little bit irritated, but I said, like, you know, that, like I've said, that the only thing standing between um, states and the federal government and, uh, and sovereignty uh, for states and, and federalism is, is the court system. So um, if that's what we have to use, that's what we have to use. But, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, 
there's hope, I guess, at, at least. Um, with regard to WERDA, I think it's, it's worth recognizing, of course, that some big things have happened. Um, ever since I got to the Senate, I've been working on this year's WERDA bill. Uh, of course, we worked on it a couple of times in the House, and we're glad to get back to the two-year cycle that we committed to um, back in my House days. And uh, and yet it's, you know, it's never quite as comprehensive as we wish it could be. Uh, we, we continue to work on it. Um, we, we did get pretty much all of the things that we wanted in the bill. Uh, WERDA, of course, falls under our jurisdiction uh, in my subcommittee and then, of course, in the, in the full committee. And I were able to get a lot of the North Dakota priorities in the Senate bill and then the compromise bill that the House just passed on Tuesday of this week. And I'll, I'll just sort of read through a couple of them, if you don't mind, because they'll be familiar to many of you. Um, deauthorizing the Rush River and, and Lower Branch Rush River projects uh, per your, the county's request. We always like to listen to the counties. Uh, authorizing the Suris River Basin Flood uh, Fish Management Project with estimated federal costs of about $60 million. Um, research and development activities related to subsurface drain systems as a flood risk reduction measure. Again, that's part of uh, a lot of the discussions I've had with landowners and, and providers and just a, a way to do it right. Um, and uh, so we're able to get that in. Directing the Corps, of course, to work with local communities on certifying uh, federally owned levies for the purposes of, of flood insurance programs. And, and we've gotten the Corps to move on, of course, the city of Wilson. That's a big one, a big project. We were very grateful uh, for the Corps' cooperation on that. And then uh, carrying out a terrestrial noxious weed control pilot program on Corps land and a section on interim risk reduction measures, which had, had already put the Corps on a path to evaluating additional alternatives to improving the integrity of the Snake Creek embankment. And that, that's, been the, that's been a great little, um, I shouldn't say little, it's a pretty big example of some of the other broader things we're talking about. Now it's an expensive one, but to get there, to get the Corps' attention on that um, was really, really important. And then to extend for another four years, the prohibition on charging fees for surplus water contracts in the Upper Missouri River. Um, but we also, you know, included lower and upper Missouri River comprehensive flood protection study in response to the 2019 flooding and then the continuation of soil moisture and snowpack monitoring. Um, it's great to have this relationship with the Corps of Engineers, finally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of the other more controversial measures. Uh, the, the House did make a couple of slight changes before uh, passing it on Tuesday, send it over to us. I don't think any of them are... Um, oh, let's just put it this way. We worked after they did that. We did work with them to roll back a couple of those things. A lot of them have to do with um, consultation process and, and, and other issues that um, you guys, again, would be familiar with. But we're able to get them rolled back to the point where I think we'll be able to pass it over here this year um, before we go home. Obviously, the Eastern North Dakota Alternative Water Supply uh, EIS issue was a, was a big victory for us. That just happened last week as well, where uh, Bureau of Reclamation noticed their final EIS for the, for the project. And that gives the state the, the option, of course, of, of drawing down uh, Missouri River water from the Garrison Diversion Unit to, to the Red River Valley. And that's been in the decades in the making. Every time I look at that project, think about it, every time we work on it, um, again, I, just, I think about Senator Mark Andrews and the fights that he had. Uh, over that dec decades ago. Um, so the cooling off period for that, by the way, does end on January 4th. And uh, we, we are optimistic that, uh, that a rod will be uh, forthcoming and uh, issued shortly thereafter. Uh, it, it, uh, you, you guys know all about the EISs and the rods and what that does, but um, again, pretty major victories just in, just in this year. Of course, the Oaks test area transfer um, was a big victory and Senator Hoban deserves a lot of credit. He'd been working on that for a long time. We, it was sort of fun for me. We, I was able to um, pass legislation on it in the House and then come over here to the Senate and be able to vote on it over here and work on it. Uh, so that was kind of fun. Kate McGregor, is who I mentioned earlier, I saw last night, uh, Under Secretary, she was, or Deputy Secretary, she was at that um, event, that transfer event in October. Um, and then the Pick Sloan Missouri River program pumping power issue. And I, you know, for the irrigators, uh, this has been huge. We've been working on it. It's been very frustrating because for every time we get uh, enough history to, I think, get uh, the pup rates thing nailed down, there's some other attorney that finds some reason why, um, it, you know, we, we don't deserve that over at the Horsehead Irrigation District uh, specifically uh, being eligible for it. But we, we continue to work it. Um, we have a tremendous opportunity to, as you know, produce 
more you know irrigated high highly productive land and uh, we're going to continue to to work on that and several other things you guys so that's a very general overview of some of the the sort of top line issues um if there's a, if there are a couple of minutes left um we're oh, five minutes left in this vote okay um maybe question time for a question of one or two or, or a statement uh, good advice is always welcome <laughs> dennis if there's anybody that wants to give me a yeah, piece of yeah. mind Thank, thank you, Senator. We do have one question. Um, I'll sure. call Mike Guns here to verbalize it for you. And then if sure. anybody else has questions, uh, please submit it to the chat. And we'll get them going. Yeah, Mike. Senator Michael Gunch. Um, mm -hmm. Asking the question, um, Missouri River sedimentation issue, Title VII was included in the word of bill for abandonment. Was that language removed? Obviously, there's a number of people in the state that uh, support the Title VII activities. So we're just curious as to whether you're aware of the status. So was it, was it removed? It was not removed that I know. Um, and if it, if it was, it certainly wasn't, at, again, with my knowledge. So we'll check on it maybe before, well, we'll certainly get something back to you guys before you all wrap up. It might not be before, be before I wrap up, but. Um, okay, if, then uh, one other quick question. Is the word of bill scheduled to be passed prior to the end of this Congress? It, it, it is. Um, okay. So here's, here's, there's a little issue. <laughs> Imagine this, there's a little harbor, um, you know, issue. Um, with the use of, of the of the funds you guys are pretty familiar with and um it doesn't directly involve us it can direct north dakota depending on whether we um send our grain you know to the gulf coast or down the mississippi or if we send it then the railroad to the pacific northwest there's a little controversy over that that the house in, in, instilled but just remember the last bill that will pass will be an omnibus spending bill and the chairman of the appropriations committee richard shelby is from alabama and he all he always fixes those things um before we pass a, a final appropriations bill so um but other than that i expect that that, that the house passed version which did pass on a unanimous consent in the in the house will come over we will will be able to pass that probably similarly with a uc thank you yeah thank you guys i gotta thank run you. and cast this vote but uh, thanks for the opportunity thanks for the relationship it's it's very very important to me to be able to have access to you all and it at every level um and i know a lot of you are probably tired of talking to mark and micah and chris and me but um but we need you to do our jobs well and we appreciate the the, the role that you play thanks for your time thanks for representing us well senator kramer you bet um, bye-bye